Hey guys, this is Joseph. Welcome back to my channel. So today I have a question for you. What does influence our behavior as consumer? Or what does make us choose one product over another one? Or how can we trust a brand without knowing it? So many questions, only one answer, and it is personal branding, which is exactly what I'm covering today, so keep watching. Welcome back to a new episode of Capo Joe TV, the place to talk about marketing, online branding, and lifestyle, everything over a nice cup of coffee, which is actually blue like my outfit today. <laughs> so if you are a new coach, content creator, or entrepreneur, you are in the right place as I share so many tips and strategies for your marketing, personal branding, and social media. So do yourself a favor, hit the button subscribe, and don't forget to turn on the notifications so you do not miss my next video. You're more than welcome to follow me on Instagram and join my tribe. There I share so many useful tips that I don't share anywhere else, so go there and follow me as well. And with that out of the way, let's dive in into today's topic. I am so excited about today's video as we are covering one of my favorite topics and one of the areas where I am an expert on, which is personal branding. Personal brand is a huge part of your business and it's really what takes your business to the next level. However, you don't actually have to have a business to have a brand. What do I mean by that? Let's explain this a little better. So when it comes to your brand, it is really a, you know, factor that hugely influence consumer when they purchase. A very simple example, you will go to a supermarket and buy Coca-Cola or um, you will have so many options and Coca-Cola is not the only drink and there are so many alternatives to it but you always would pick Coca-Cola because you know the brand, because you trust the brand, because maybe your mother or your father were using it or because you were drinking it when you were a kid and all these factors allow Coca-Cola to be more expensive than a competitor and this is exactly what happened in fashion right you might have the same backpack in two different brands you might have Louis Vuitton charging a thousand pounds for it you will have another brand with a very similar quality but charging less for uh, the same similar product the reason why we do that is because by building a personal brand you allow to price your product and services uh, on a higher price point because you have a social proof so how do we build a personal brand in this day and age in social media if we don't have any of it but we really want to make our product services stand out let's find out social media often is underestimated from the power that they have they can be yes a place where you drive more sales yes a place where you drive more traffic to your website but really also the main point where you can start to tell the story of your brand storytelling is a huge part of your personal brand people really do connect with your product through their story people buy stories over products they really want to know who is behind that brand how that brand came about what is the passion behind it what's the reason why you created and by knowing all this factor this is the way you can definitely connect with that particular company even more and really build that relationship of trust which is a huge point when it comes to sales people don't buy from you if they don't trust you which is why i really believe in any business to deliver value first um, before your actual product when it comes to personal branding online i really believe that you should share all your knowledge and your expertise in a way that is um, delivering value to your consumer and that involves a lot of free stuff very often i for example share so much strategy online and so many um, things that i could actually charge for but i decided to do it for free and the reason why i do it for free is because that's gonna help me to build my trust and to help people to understand what i am about and what i sell and if people trust you when it comes to the decision of purchase that they have in the future whether it's in a day in a month or in three months they will buy from you because you gave them so much value before that that value is the reason why they connect with you on a deeper level so storytelling and delivering value through your content is a huge part
Point number two is authenticity. Authenticity is a huge part of your personal brand. You really want to show up for yourself, for your business, but also you really want to show that isn't everything that they see isn't always perfect. So really people connect through, um, you know, something that is relatable to them. So if you show up in a way that is authentic and you show up the behind the scene of your, of your business, people really like that. They really want to connect with you because they can see that you are real. And that authenticity, it's hugely important. For example, when I started working on um, Instagram, people were just really keen on my content, on my feed, but they didn't really, but they didn't really see me much on my story. When I started to use stories, I started to build more of a personal connection because at the end of the day, we don't really want to see only what you sell and that your product is amazing. We just want to see the person behind it. We just want to see that you are, you know, authentic, that you have a bad day sometimes and that's okay. And you know, I really personally connect a lot with people that have such a strong personal brand behind it and they really put their face on it. I work with so many entrepreneurs in the past that they don't really want to show up. They don't really want to show up for what they sell and they just expect this sale is going to be automatic and it's just going to happen. Well, unfortunately in 2020, I think the huge part of that is the human connection that you can build with your customer. So people really want to know you, they really want to see you and the most successful personal brand that I see are the one where the founder really you know is in front of it and is on top of it they basically share their value their expertise their life and also there is definitely a balance with what you share right you don't really want to share everything you really want to share something that is relatable to your consumer share those value that people believe on share those value that people will connect with you or perhaps share some uh, behind the scene on why your product is so amazing how this product can change your customer life by using what I call lifestyle marketing. Lifestyle marketing is a huge part of personal branding and it's how really consumer can connect with that product because they introduce that product into a personal life and how that product will change their day-to-day -day routine which is why um, we connect more with it because we can actually implement this change straight away and we can see how that will work. My next point is a huge part of personal branding, which is not just your logo, but really your whole color mood. What do I mean by that? Color mood is the color scheme that you want to use when you are talking about your products and services. So color scheme is a huge part of personal branding and you really want to be consistent with the content that you produce online, whether that is your website, whether that is your social media, whether that is your e-commerce, you really want to find colors and a vibe and a way of copywriting that really resonate with your audience. Think about how you want your brand to be seen. Would you like it to be fun? Would you like it to be moody? Would you like it to be, you know, luxury? Would you like it to be, um, you know, one of those brands that stand down because it's extremely bold? So think about the vibe and the mood that you want your brand to be. And when I talk about brand, I also talk about people, right? Because sometimes when it comes to social media, you might have influencers or content creators that don't really have a product yet to sell, but they have a very strong personal brand. And it is based on the way they edit their content or the way they show up. Um, online, they have a certain color scheme or they have a certain logo that they use. Consistency is key online and you know, I am a huge believer of that. I try to keep my color scheme very consistency, uh, you know, very, I try to keep my color scheme very consistent. I try to keep, you know, the vibe of my content very consistent. And the reason why I do that is because once you have consistency in what you create, people know exactly what to expect. And you can use something different all the time because it doesn't want to be too much of a scheme, but you really want to introduce something new one step at a time. So your audience and your consumer will get used to it. The strongest personal brand are the ones that are very simple in the way the color scheme is, but they are really, really recognizable. And you know, there is a huge misconception when it comes to personal brand because people think the personal brand is just a logo. You can definitely be a personal brand yourself and you might not have a logo, but people will still recognize who you are based on the way you introduce and you basically present your content. This is a huge part of personal branding as well.
A huge point of personal branding is the more specific, the better. What do I mean by that? You really want to talk to a specific niche of people. I actually did a video where I talk about um, finding your niche line that you can find right here. And you know, when it comes to um, speaking and delivering your message um, to the right audience, this is a huge part when it comes to personal branding as well. Let's make an example. Let's say you are at school, uh, you you are in high school, and you obviously have different group of you know people at school. You have the people that are into cheerleader, people that are into sports, people that are into fashion, whatever it could be, right? So think about you as a person. Try to speak not to the whole school at all. Try to speak to just that group of 10, 15 people that are really interested in what you have to say. And this is exactly how it works in business and how it works in personal branding. You really want to pick the selection of people that are super interested in what you do and they are, you know, raving for it. They love what you do, they love what you stand for and they love your message. And once you speak in their same language your customer do, the game is done because you are effectively speaking to people that are interested on in your product. And I notice another problem in marketing, I feel like so many brands want to speak to everyone and you really want to speak to a group of 10 people that are super keen on what you do and then those 10 people will call another 10 people and another 10 people and this is gonna be like a chain game, right? So this is the way you build this is like, it takes it takes two people to build a village or whatever they say. But anyway, this is the example I wanted to bring on. You know, be super specific and the more specific, the better when it comes to your ideal customer. This is a huge part as well of personal branding. Huge part of personal branding is let your personality shine. Show who you are, show what you can do, show yourself, your best self and your worst self, because this is gonna be really relatable to people. I actually did a post on Instagram a couple of weeks ago where I was showing, um, it was an Instagram versus reality game, and it was just really interesting to see what kind of picture people connect with the most. You know, I did a super photo shoot snap picture where I was looking, you know, super airbrushed and super good and, you know, very professional and very branded. And another picture where it was more authentic and just basically woke up in the morning, just put my glasses on and I took a picture of it. So I did a Instagram versus reality and I did it because, um, I think people love to see both. They love to see the polished version of your stuff as well as your real version, and this is where you really connect with people in a deeper level. And this is why you also wanna have different kind of people. People that will come to you only for your product, but people that will buy your product also because they like you, and this is the game, and this is how you do it. Before I wrap this up, I really wanna break down personal branding in keywords, and these keywords are the following. Relatable, authentic, consistent, simple and genuine. So write them down and try to work your content, your business around these keywords and try to relate your value to it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. And I just wanted to remind you that you can join my community over on Instagram as well. And you can tune in each and every Monday with a new episode of a Cup of Joe podcast, which is on Spotify and iTunes. Thank you so much for watching and I see you same time, same place next week. <laughs>